of age by Olga captivated without knowledge of the heart, he was a guard humiliated of silly infantile funds. In the protective groves and dales, he shared all her fun and games, foretold marriage to the kids, their friends and neighbors, and their kins. In the backwood and shadow nice, she, like a lily of the valleys, under the eyes and ears of parents, grew full of innocent delights, unknown in the thick of grass, either to bees or butterflies. Through her, the poet was presented the young delights of first-time dreams, the thought of her exasperated his flute to utter prime screams. Fare you well, the games of gold. He came to love the wild grove, a quiet solitary life, the starry sky and moonlit night, the moon, the shining lamp of space, we have devoted to her light, long vigils in the dead of night, and tears ordeal of secret grace. But nowadays we see in it replacement of the lamps half lit. Always obedient, always modest, and simple as a poet's life, forever merry as the morning sweet as a kiss of youthful love, eyes as blue-colored as the air, a smile, heavy curls of hair, the movement, voice and figure frail, the whole of Olga, any tale, you take it and you sure have it. Her portrait, which is very nice, I used to be myself enticed, but I'm bored like hell with it. Allow me, my dear listener, to focus on the elder sister. Tatiana was her sister's name, and for the first time as such, the tender pages of this tale we shall so willfully divulge. What then? It sounds so mild. With it, I know, undivided, is the remembrance of the past and maiden's room we all but must confess a small amount of taste in our names and ourselves to mention nothing of the worse there being no education trace and what remained to our lot was airs and graces and what not and so Tatiana was her name, nor beauty of her sister's face, nor rosy cheeks without a stain would ever draw the public gaze. So wild, sad, and very queer, as timid as a fallow deer, she, in the middle of her class, looked like a holy foreign lass to any of her nearest kindred, she would have never loved display. She never used to jump or play, herself a child, in throngs of children, and frequently for days on end, her time was at windows spent. Abstraction was her greatest pleasure. From very early cradle days, the passage of her rural leisure was lavishly by dreams arrayed. Her delicate and tender fingers were not acquainted with needles. She did embroidery with lot and never would revive a cloth. A special sign of domination, nursing a doll, the little rogue, is getting ready as a joke to decency and worldly fashion repeating at a steady pace the sounds that her mother says. But dolls, at that age notwithstanding, Tatiana 
never took in hand. On city talk or fancy dressing, she never spoke a single word. And little children's fun and games were alien to her. Fairy tales in winter in the dead of night captured her mind outright. When Nanny found a ground patch for Olga on a grassy meadow and called her girlfriends all together, she never played the race and touch. She was annoyed by ringing noise and sound of their fickle joys. She liked when standing on the terrace to look ahead for rising sun, whenever on the pallid heavens no more stars do round run. And when the edge of earth is lighted and breezes with the first rays sighted will herald the ascending day. In winter, when the nightly shade is still embracing all the west, in idle silence of the night, while fuzzy moon is still in sight, and lazy east is still at rest, awakened at the hour of dawn, she used to rise with candles on. She liked to read to stupefaction. The books were answers to how so. She fell in love with the deception by Richardson and by Rousseau. Her father was a fine bloke, delayed in times quite remote. To him there was no harm in letters, and having never ever read them, regarded books as fool's delight, being not inquisitive at all what secret volumes she would hold under her pillow through the night. As to his wife, she was herself crazy of Richardson like hell. Of Richardson, she was like crazy, but not because of having read, and not because she loveless hated, preferring Grandison instead. In old times, Princess Alina, her Moscow friend and her cousina, repeated often times that name, her future husband being too plain, and as a bride she was unwilling, she used to sigh about another who with his heart and mind rather was touching on her better feeling, that Grandison was very smart, a gambler and sergeant of the guard.